when Jesus says things like, your faith has healed you, um, some people get tripped up on that. We, we can struggle with that because that can be weaponized against some people. Like you don't get healed, then you just suck at having faith. That's what that means. Um, no, that's not what that means. Um, we can struggle with faith. We need to be honest about that if we're struggling with faith, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, what we have to remember is we can't think of faith like it's a substance. Like if you were to make a bar of soap and you were like, you use the soap and you're like, well, the soap made me clean, right? It's going to do that. We can't think of faith like that, like I've got this bar of faith. And if I apply it, God has to come through with the thing I've asked for, right? It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It's a combination of our faith plus God's plan, God's will. But there's a few factors that go into it. It's honestly a bit bizarre and, and weird to think about how that works. But faith is an important aspect of it. They're closely, they go together. And so when Jesus says, your faith has made you well, at the end of that passage, he says, what does he say to her? He says, be healed from your disease. Still has to be the word of Jesus, right? Still, it's still, it's still weighted on the word, on, on the will and the word of God, on Jesus. The medical profession, that doctors and nurses who heal, who it's their job to heal people, that that is also a gift of healing. Can we, can we categorize a gift of healing that way as well? Because the knowledge they have to heal people medically comes from God. The skill they have comes from God. The resources they have comes from, it all comes from God. And so surely we should understand that if, if a medical doctor or a nurse or somebody administering, you know, someone doing a surgery or administering um, medications, whatever it might be, that we, we, would, we wouldn't say like, well, next time I hope God heals me instead of the doctor healing me. That we'd actually recognize God has healed me. He just went about it this particular way. It'd be you know, similar to you seeing a counselor and you get emotional healing. Like, well, it wasn't, you know, God gave them the gift and the ability to do that. Doc, what about Luke, the doctor? Luke, you know, the gospel writer, wrote, wrote the gospel of Luke, wrote the book of Acts. Those two books together comprise the largest amount of writing in the New Testament. He wrote more than half the New Testament. He was a doctor good friends with the Apostle Paul. Doctors, the gift of the, the prof medical profession, this is another way that God heals you. If you just naturally recover from a sickness, do you just say, well, hopefully next time God supernaturally heals me? Well, wait a second, God gave you your immune system. This is healing. So anytime you get better, you say, I had a cold, now I'm better from my cold. Actually, you can legitimate, legitimately say, God healed me. Because he gave you the immunity to actually deal with that sickness, whether it's a doctor or a nurse or whether it is by a supernatural hand, by a gift of healing that God gives, there's healing that happens now. And we have to be really, we have to be honest about this and say this. We shouldn't have to say this, but we kind of have to say this, that not everyone is healed. And even those that are healed, they'll get sick again and die. Healing in this life is temporary. I mean, praise God for it. When you see, we've seen some healings. We've seen healings in my life. In our church, we've seen healings. When you like and subscribe, this video reaches more people.